Welcome to The Compressor Guru. Today, the guru will show you step-by-step -step how to change a pressure switch on a five horsepower compressor with a magnetic or definite purpose starter. And now, here's the guru. Okay, so the tank is green down. I've shut the valve off so I don't forget and wonder why it's not pumping back up. Hope we ruined the snake's day out there in the yard. Um, power's off, and we're now going to change the pressure switch. This is very simple. We're going to start by getting this screw loose off the conduit elbow. All it takes a little a screwdriver and a push on one of the tabs. There we go. I gotta compliment my camera girl, camera wife. I've been married a long time, I should be able to call her wife all the time. I gotta compliment her because the other day I looked at the early shots of her getting pressure switch and she was doing a great job and I was worried she wasn't close enough. She's awesome. Okay, that's ready. We need to take our ground loose. It's right there. And it looks like there's no ground in that BX. We're also now going to take our two wires. We want to come over here. We're going to take these two wires off. I guess I could use a stubby. This is one way that a compressor switch will wire up. This is literally acts just like a light switch, on and off. So you have uh, two different sets of points here. We literally put the wires on one set of points and when the compressor, when the pressure drops down, the points close. When the pressure goes back up, the points open starting and stopping the compressor. And there we have the wires out. We're going to slip the nut for the conduit over the wires. Set it out of the way where we don't lose it like I usually do. Like Bud usually does. That's out of the way and we're just going to let that hang right there for a few minutes. Now, Back in here behind, we have a quarter inch air line that comes from the check valve that when this switch opens, it uh, when, when the switch opens and turns the machine off, it also pushes down on a little needle valve and drains the drains this line between the check valve and the compressor. That way when it restarts, it starts with no pressure. So what we're going to do, we're going to put two wrenches on it. There'll be a 7 16 wrench on the valve itself. And a half inch wrench on the nut on the line. And we're going to loosen it. That's loose. And the switch that we're putting in is exactly like the switch coming out and we don't have to move the line bend it or anything we're gonna have to put a wrench on so there's a cross Coming up out of the compressor, and there's a cross coming up out of the compressor. Now we're going to take it out like that. <laughs> Actually, we'll just take it right there like that. Now we'll put. Another wrench right there. And it's 
about the right size wrench, but it's going to have to do because I only bought, brought one set of open ends today. I didn't think I was going to need two. Oh, puppy's tight. There we go. Uh-oh. I'm going to have to take that valve out anyway, where this, the gauge has come out with the valve went through. So, the other compressor kicked in, and instead of trying to fish the sound out of it, we decided to overdub this. The uh, pressure switch we ordered was the exact switch, except it is a female quarter inch, and the one that came out of it is a male quarter inch. So what we need is we need a quarter inch short or close nipple. My shop's about a mile away. I'm going to run over to the shop and grab one. I'll be right back. The compressor guru has returned with the much sought after close nipple. And we will put thread uh, seal on it. Get it off. We'll put it into the new switch. Making sure the threads are covered all the way around. I had a Navy guy work for me one time. His name was Todd Onik. He was actually a pastor when he was working for me, and that's how he survived. Just a couple extra bucks from the butt. Uh, and he was a boiler tech in the Navy, and he would also put the dope on the inside of the uh, female part. And to me, that was redundant, but I guess that was the way the Navy did it. So, that being said, that started in. We're gonna dope the outside. Ain't that dope, dude? I know. I'm not cool enough to say that. We'll put the dope on the outside. And very simply, screw it back in. This is a very easy fix. We're overdubbing again. The wrench and the way this was. We could only get about a sixth of a turn on per time, so we went into fast forward. I uh, thought it would be a good idea to explain to you what the snake in the yard's about. Uh, if you watch after the uh, instructional part's over, we'll take you in the tour of the garage. There is a decent chance there's a snake laying out in the grass where the tank drains to, and it suits me just fine to ruin their day. So we continue with changing the pressure switch. What you see here is all the better shot we can get of hooking up the unloader tube back to the pressure switch. It's on the right rear corner of this one. It's a half inch nut on the tube and there's a 7 16 uh, hex head up underneath the pressure switch. Now I'm going to put a 7 16 wrench on it. I'm going to hold it with my left hand over top and you can't even see the wrench, but it's there. I'll take a half inch wrench and begin tightening the tube. It is crucial, crucial to put that 7 16 wrench on that valve. It is only a small brass tube that goes through there. And if you try tightening up that copper tube with the half wrench wrench without locking the valve with another wrench it is very easy to break that stem that goes up into the switch off i don't want to admit it but bud's done that a few times the guru never has that being done we're going to take the cover off the new switch and we are going to attach the two wires in the ground back into the switch. I usually try to save the paperwork that comes with the switch and put it in the cover. 
That's what I did there. Now, you guys, don't get mad at yourself and don't get lazy. Right now is the time when you want to find that wire nut or that nut that went on the conduit to the elbow that comes into the switch. If you go and put your wires on and then decide, oh, I got to tighten that elbow up, well, then you have to take your wires off to slip the nut over the elbow, over the wires to the elbow. So now is the time to put that nut over the wires, even if you don't attach the elbow yet, which I usually don't do that until last, because if I have to move the wires around a little bit, sometimes they're easier to move if the uh, elbow's still loose. And there it's in place. I haven't tightened it. You can see it's loose in the switch. First thing I'm going to work on is the ground wire. It goes on that green screw in the bottom. And uh, whoever the electrician was that wired this up, he didn't do it the way I would have done it. I would have run a ground wire originally, or I would have bought BX cable with uh, a ground wire in it. But this is using the wire that ties the BX cable together as the ground. And it's been working for quite a few years, so I'm not going to change it. I'm going to get the wire attached under the screw. A little bit of fiddling around, being arthritic and having giant fingers. I saw, you'll see me walking next to Dustin uh, in the shop later, and I think you'll see that I'm rather a large guy. I'm not just fat, I'm big. And anyway, so that's in place. The wire's in place. Now let's tighten it up so that doesn't move. By the way, while I'm working on this, let's just take a quick mention that we are going to start putting the uh, shops that we're at that don't, that want their advertising and show their capabilities we're going to post a video of the shop a walkthrough of their technology their people their layout and that's going to be done here later we're going to, we dustin one of the techs here gives us a nice tour and we'll put that video up right after this video so Right here, I'm explaining that there's points on each side of that switch, and we need to stay with the two wires on one set of points or the other. So let's let number them one, two, three, four from left to right. We either want to go on one and two for the one wire on one and the other wire on two, or we want to go on three and four. You cannot put them on one and three or two and four or one and four or any combination like that. You need to go one, two or three, four with these two wires so it works properly as, a, as the switch just to start and stop this machine. And that would be number four I'm tightening up. And these wires are not color coded. There's a black and there's a white. In this particular application, they're just two wires. Wouldn't matter which one's black or which one's white. They're on there. Now it's time to put the nut on that conduit elbow. Like I said, my big fat fingers don't always fit in those little tiny places very well. There's just little tabs on the 
nut and you push them with a screwdriver or if you have the room perhaps like in a large switch box or something you can get on them with a pair of pliers myself and most electricians i've seen just get a screwdriver on them drive them tight once they get them pretty tight they'll uh, get on the tab again and bump them with a hammer or just bump them real good with their hand and And I get on it, bump down on it, bump down on it, check the elbow, good and tight. Put the cover back on and we'll do some testing. Cover back on. Turn it on, see where it pumps to, make sure that this is the secondary compressor. That'll be the primary compressor. That one should come on first. This one second. I'm going to plug it back in. And this, we're going to edit this. You're not going to sit here for eight minutes. But this compressor will pump from zero to 175 in about eight minutes or a little bit less. Uh, five horsepower, 17.5 CFM your two-stage machine any brand you're going to be in the seven and a half to ten minute range to pump up an isolated tank 80 gallon turn it on and see where everything settles down and we're going so through the magic of the editor we use we are waiting for it to come up it's been about eight minutes and as you see we're coming up very close to the 175 pressure we expect this to be set at now the great compressor should shut off first and it didn't so I took a 3 8 nut driver and turned the screw out two turns and we got them both running again and as we wait, a lot of this business is standing around waiting for machines to cycle, waiting for them to pump up. And I do charge by the hour, but I try not to waste time. So we're waiting to make sure the gray machine shuts off. It did, and then about eight to 10 seconds later, the yellow machine shut off. Okay. We came in, we changed the switch. I showed you step by step. This is one way a pressure switch is wired. When we have other opportunities to show you, we'll make other episodes out of them. I appreciate you viewing. And as uh, the Lone Ranger said to Tondo, I think our work here is done. This is the Compressor Guru. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a great day. Immediately after this video, the Guru will post another short bonus video about Midway Collision of Phillipsburg, Pennsylvania. We tour the shop and get a wonderful tour of this shop's abilities to repair auto and truck bodies. Thanks for watching The Compressor Guru. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that reminder bell. God bless you and have a great day.